Okay, so welcome back. Now, at the end of the video, uh, I asked you just to note down which of the three persuasive strategies you think will be most effective for you and is most important for you. Um, so I mentioned it's interesting to do a little bit of introspection and to consider what is important to you. Um, personally, I find that Logos is probably the most important one for me. Uh, I will try to understand something. I'll try understand the, to understand the logic behind it, try to find evidence supporting it um, before I kind of make my decision on what I should do, whether I should buy something or whether I should uh, take a certain action. Um, the other two elements also definitely come in. Certainly the emotional appeal or the authority of a personal brand definitely do factor in as well. But Logos would be the one that would be most persuasive to me. And I've heard different people say different things. Uh, some people say that the trusting a brand or trusting a person is the most important thing for them. And then they're willing to go along with their suggestions or their ideas because they just don't have time as an individual to, to check out the logic and facts and statistics of every single thing that comes up. So they really just have to go with ethos. Uh, and alternatively, there are other people who say that um, it's really pathos, it's really the emotional appeal that really gets them. The other two relate and they're, they have some importance, but it's only the emotional content that's actually going to get them to do something, to actually take action. There has to be that emotional appeal there as well. So uh, with that in mind, let's take a look at these three paragraphs and decide which of the three strategies each of them employs. So first up, the search for alternative energy sources should be a priority. Humans are consuming 35 billion barrels of oil per year. This energy drives our entire economy and way of life, but is a limited resource and will eventually run out. Meanwhile, the pop human population continues to grow by around 80 million per year. Clearly, will we need to clearly we will need to find new effective ways to power human civilization. This search requires continued focus and investment. Okay, so looking back over this paragraph, um, it's clear that we've got some statistics, we've got some facts, um, this energy drives our entire economy, um, the human population growing by 80 million a year. This first paragraph really focuses in on logos, facts and statistics, laying the groundwork for the argument. Okay, next up, imagine a world without transportation, electricity and plastics. Imagine how quickly our entire civilization would fall into chaos, turmoil and violence. There would be massive food shortages, people dying of pneumonia, science and education would grind to a halt. Our dependence on oil for our way of life is extremely precarious. We need to invest in other energy sources in order to protect ourselves. Okay, so... Um, we don't really have any facts or statistics in here. So there's nothing we can pin down there. So it's definitely not Logos. Um, we don't really have an individual or a group or a brand or a company mentioned either. So it's not going to be ethos. Um, but we, what we do have is uh, a picture that's painted, a scenario that's given to us. Um, and this is kind of a doomsday scenario, you know, chaos, turmoil, violence, food shortages, um, and the sense that everything is precarious at the moment because we're just dependent on one fuel source, essentially. And this is definitely pathos. This is an emotional appeal. And the emotion that's being uh, tapped into here, I would say would be, more than anything, would be fear. So it's not just the positive emotions that cause us to act. A negative emotion such as fear, anxiety, uh, they also cause us to act as well. In fact, it's probable that they're actually stronger drivers of human action. Um, so we feel negative things more intensely than we feel positive things, unfortunately. So they may even be more important drivers of human action. 
Um, so painting this picture and creating this kind of sense of fear um, is definitely playing into pathos. It's an emotional driver there. Okay, so lastly here, uh, Professor Ethan Siegel, physics lecturer and author of Beyond the Galaxy, stated in a recent article in Forbes, in Forbes magazine that he believed the best energy solution in the future may be nuclear. Siegel has spent his entire career researching, discussing and writing about the cutting edge of physics and has one of the best read blogs in science as well as a regular blog with NASA. He predicts that nuclear fusion, a so far underdeveloped area of nuclear energy, offers the most possibilities as a long-term energy source. Okay, so in this paragraph we have a solution being put forward, which is uh, nuclear energy. And we also have a person, uh, Ethan Siegel, um, a physics lecturer and author, putting forward this argument. And so you probably saw that there is a lot of emphasis on this person's uh, credentials. Physics lecturer, um, quoted in Forbes magazine, which is a big important magazine. Siegel has a well-read blog of his own and also a, a blog with NASA and has a, a big background discussing and writing about physics. Um, so clearly here, this is an appeal to ethos. It's, it's about the credibility of this writer, his authority. Uh, he has more authority than your average person discussing this um, topic because of his experience, because of his knowledge, because of his position as a physics lecturer, um, and also as a general educator and commentator on the developments in the field. So here we have a clear appeal to ethos. Okay, so these three paragraphs obviously all deal with um, the energy situation, and you could combine all three of them together uh, and actually you'd have a really strong overall argument because you have logos, you have pathos, and you also have ethos as well. Logos kind of sets the scene, all the facts and the statistics. Um, the second paragraph there kind of sets a doomsday scenario about what could happen, creates a sense of fear uh, uh, in the reader. And finally, we have a solution that's put forward and it's been put forward by somebody with a great deal of credibility. So, uh, so this would be quite a persuasive argument for why we should begin to look more at nuclear energy as a potential energy source going forward. Okay, so just a brief note here. Skilled persuasive writing combines all three elements of logos, pathos and ethos. Okay, so it's not the case that you just have to focus on one or the other. When you're really trying to persuade, you should incorporate all three into your writing. Okay, so next what I want you to do is to have a go at this exercise here. Write a letter to your local council, persuading them to increase spending on schemes giving young people better access to work experience. Okay, so what I want you to do before you actually go away and write something is I want you to do a little bit of research related to work experience, the importance of work experience, work experience schemes. Okay, so I want you to put down a few arguments that would fall under each of these categories. Okay, so just pause the video now. Let's just spend 10 minutes just doing a bit of research and put down a few arguments in each of these categories. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at putting down one or two arguments in each of these boxes here. These ideas are by no means definitive or exhaustive, they're just a few thoughts that I had. So, Logos, um, I would probably look for some statistics here. And there are statistics that show that people who've had work experience um, do benefit and they're more likely to get employed. So experience is really important for employers. The logical reason for increasing spending is um, you'd be able to uh, increase the reach of 
um, uh, any campaign, if you actually put a bit of money behind it, uh, you can do events, you can do advertising, and you can actually increase the reach of these campaigns, get people more um, opportunity to do work experience. Okay, so for ethos, I would look at individual companies. I would look at maybe some companies or brands and actually see what they say about their work experience schemes. And uh, obviously they have authority in the area of employment, of uh, enterprise. So that would be what I would look at in, in that box there. Okay, so for pathos, I would actually go for an anecdote. Okay, so there is a phrase which goes, facts tell, stories sell. Okay, and that's a phrase from uh, sales. I think it's pretty well known. Um, and the idea is that a story or an anecdote kind of really does sell an idea. It puts it forward in a much stronger way. Um, so in order to get that emotional appeal, I'm going to go for an anecdote or a story about maybe a successful, um, a successful uh, person who had also done some work experience and, and you know how it changed their life or how it really gave them more opportunities. Okay, so by putting these three elements together, we will be able to build quite a strong case for persuading the local council to uh, increase spending schemes, giving young people better access to work experience. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to have a go at actually writing this letter. Now, this would be um, a full answer, so it would be a 40 mark question, and you would want to spend 45 minutes on it. Okay, so you spend 40 minutes actually writing it, and then uh, five minutes checking over. So you've already spent five or 10 minutes planning, so this probably should take you about 35 minutes to write. Okay, so the next task is for you to actually have a go at this yourself, write a letter to your local council uh, persuading them on this issue. Okay, so that's the end of this video and uh, do make sure that you go away and have a go at doing this task in full.